Okay, YouTube, so this lecture is going to be part of what I would consider a general chemistry series, although many organic chemistry students are required to know how to do this. So what the subject here today is going to be is an example of how to find a limiting reactant, sometimes called a limiting reagent, and how to calculate your theoretical yield and technically how to find your percent yield if you have an actual yield. So we're going to go over all of that with an example question that I have set up here. So, here's the question. A combustion of propane gas uses 25 grams of propane and 30 grams of oxygen. How much carbon dioxide can be produced in theory? What is the percent yield if you recovered 50.5 grams of carbon dioxide? All right, so the first thing we need to do before you tackle anything else in a limiting reactant situation is that you need to have an equation and it needs to be balanced. So the first thing that we're going to attempt to do is to balance our equation. So let me grab my pen here and we're going to write out the combustion reaction and then we're also going to balance it. Okay, so the combustion reaction would be propane, which is C3H8, and we need the oxygen there. Now remember, when we do combustion, it's molecular oxygen, so we're talking about O2, is going to give us, and combustion reactions will give us CO2, that's what we're looking for, and water. Those are going to be the products of the combustion reaction. So this is not balanced at this point. We want to make sure that we have a balanced equation that we're going to be working with before we get started on all of the math. So what I would do here, I always teach students to balance one atom at a time on each side. So we say, how many carbons are there? There's three on this side due to the propane. And then how many are over here? I only see one due to the carbon dioxide. So what I'm going to need is a three in front of my CO2 value. Now don't go back and attempt to change anything until you get through one round of everything. So then I go to H. And with H, I find that I have eight over here, and over here I only have two of them, and that's due to the water. So I'm gonna need four waters in order to get eight hydrogens. So now this is good, this is good. So then I go to the oxygens. Over here I have two oxygens on the right. I have six because three times two, all right? And then I also have four due to that. So that's a total of 10 that I find over on the react on the product side. So when I take a look at this, I would need a five as my coefficient in front of here to multiply and get 10. So then I go through and I check the entire reaction. I have three carbons on the left, three on the right. I have eight hydrogens on the left. I have eight on the right due to the water. And I just did my oxygens, nothing has changed there. So this is good to go. And this would be considered a balanced equation at this point. So the next thing that I can do is I can get ready to start running the calculations for my limiting reactant, provided I'm given that information, which I am. So if we look here, 25 grams of propane and 30 of oxygen. So I've got 25 grams of propane and I have 30 grams of molecular oxygen. All right, now a lot of students will get confused at this point and they'll say, well, the limiting reactant must be the propane. And that's because when I deal with the propane, it's got only 25 grams, right, instead of 30. Well, that's not the way that we go about this. And you also don't want to say, well, this has one, an implied one in front of it, whereas this has a five. You need to use a combination of the grams and the molar ratios, which we're going to tap into molar mass to figure that out. And then we will be able to calculate the limiting reactant. So let's set this up here for the limiting reactant and find out which one is limiting. Right, so I have 25 grams of the propane, and you're going to need molar mass in order to accomplish this. So if you go to the periodic table and you add up three carbons and eight hydrogens, you're going to find that the total that you come out with should come out to, let me take a look at my notes here, 44.1, right? So it's 44, I keep two decimal places, grams, and that's for every one mole of the propane, right? And this is grams of propane and one mole of propane. So I've got that. That converts to moles of propane. Now, 
the question asks me how much carbon dioxide can I actually obtain if I run through this reaction with the given amounts. So now what I want to do is use the balanced equation, and this is why you always start with a balanced equation. I would say that I have three moles of CO2, that's found right up here, for every how many moles of propane? One. So it only takes one mole of propane from the balanced equation in order to produce three moles of CO2. And this molar ratio is important. You cannot stop until you get to this point. So now if I run through all of this, it's going to tell me the moles of CO2 that this much propane could produce. So if I run that through a calculator, the value that you should get out would be 1.70 moles of CO2. So that's how many potential moles of CO2 I could create, okay, if I was given 25 grams of propane for this reaction. Now I need to check my oxygen, which we said there was 30. So what I do here is I say, all right, 30 grams of O2. Again, I'm going to need the molar mass of O2. So I would say every one mole of O2. Oxygen is 16 apiece. So you add both of those up and you get 32 grams of O2 in every mole of O2. And then again, I need the multiplier here. So I go back up and I say there are five moles of O2 for every three moles of CO2. Remember, what goes on the bottom is what's getting canceled out. I want to cancel out moles of O2. And I said that there were five moles of O2, right, for every three moles of CO2. You have to do this last step in order to get this right. You have to use the numbers, the ratios you're finding here. Five moles of O2, three moles of CO2. That's where that number is coming from when you see these down here. Keep in mind, you want to cross this stuff out. So grams of propane, moles of propane gets me to moles of CO2. Uh, grams of O2 gives me mole of O2 gives me mole of CO2. So now I'm, to use the term, comparing apples to apples, right? I'm comparing moles of CO2 to moles of CO2. That's the only way you can determine a limiting reactant, because whichever one will produce less for you is the one that's going to run out first, and that would be the limiting reactant. So the value that you should get here would be 0 0.563, 0 0.563 moles of CO2. So which one is the limiting reactant in this case? It turns out that it's the oxygen because I can produce a lesser amount of CO2 than I can for when I'm using the, the propane. The oxygen will run out first. It can only produce this much CO2 when I'm working with it. All right, so what I'm going to do here, keep this, jot this value down. You're going to want to keep it and understand how we got that. We're now going to take a look at the theoretical yield. So how much should I expect that I can get on a gram basis of CO2? So let me clear the board for a second, okay, and then we'll continue forward with that. So mark that number down, and then we're going to rewrite it. Okay, so I just cleared the board. We're going to continue from exactly where we were. I want to mention one thing. I actually had a typo here. I had 50.5 and that was miscopied from my notes. It should be 15.5. So if you guys wrote down that value earlier or you're keeping track of it, change that to 15.5. Uh, that was my mistake. I added a 50.5 there instead of a 15.5. All right, so that should be 15.5 and we'll come to that in just a minute here. So we're talking about theoretical yield. We determined the limiting reactant is going to be the oxygen in this case because it could produce less. So then we say, all right, the oxygen could produce a total amount, right, of the value 0.563 moles of CO2. So we said that's how much CO2 we could produce and then the oxygen would run out. So now all we need to do in order to get the theoretical yield is multiply by the molar mass of the carbon dioxide. So the molar mass of carbon dioxide for every one mole, this goes on the bottom this time because I'm looking to cancel out moles of CO2 and get grams. If I add it up off of the table, it's 44.01 grams of CO2 in every one mole of CO2. So all I have to do is multiply those two values together 
And then the value that I get from that would be the theoretical yield. So I'm able to find that. Now, if I multiply these together, I get 24.8 grams of CO2. So this is the CO2 that I could produce in theory. This is called the theoretical yield. So if the reaction went to plan and everything worked 100% the way it should, 100% yield would be 24.8 grams of CO2. Now, again, this value should not be 50. That was too high. I mistyped that. So 15.5. So what we're saying here is if you recovered, if you as the, the chemist actually got 15.5 grams of carbon dioxide, all right, what would your percent yield be? So think of it just like a test. If this is the maximum score of CO2 I can obtain, this is how much I actually obtained, what is my percent recovery? How successful was the reaction? So for this, this is the easiest part. All I have to do is say my actual yield, which was 15.5 grams, over my theoretical yield, which I calculated to be 24.8 grams, is going to give me the percent yield. Now I would do a multiplier by 100 because this is gonna be a decimal point, but that decimal will convert into the percentage that you're looking for. So if you take on your calculator 15.5, and divide that into 24.8, what you should come out with is 62.5%. So it would be 0.625, right? And then with the 100 times multiplier here, you're dealing with a percent yield of 62.5%. So of the theoretical amount that I could actually obtain, I obtained about 62.5% of that CO2. All right, so that is an example of how you could go about finding your limiting reagent in a situation, predicting the theoretical yield, and then showing the percent yield based on the actual amount that you obtained. So there's a few rules here. Number one, get an equation and balance it. Before you do anything else, balance your equation. Number two, take the reagents that are being given to you and their amounts and convert them all into the product of interest. In this case, it was CO2. So I needed to find out which one is gonna run out first when attempting to produce the CO2. That was the main step we took in the first part of this video. After that, when I find out which one produces less, that's the limiting reactant. So I can identify that as the limiting reactant. That value carries over as the moles that I could produce, the most amount, the highest amount, right? And then I can multiply that value by the molar mass. That is going to give me the theoretical yield in grams. And then once I have the theoretical yield, it's just a simple fraction of what did I actually obtain over how much should I theoretically have obtained. You put that in, times it by 100, you have your percent yield. So hopefully people that were struggling with this, I know this concept can be difficult at first in uh, when you're first exposed to it in general chemistry. Maybe you needed a refresher if you're in organic chemistry, but hopefully you found this useful in how you would go about approaching this, okay? That balanced equation is essential. I'm really trying to drive that point home. So you can like the video. Sorry for the error that was in it, but if, if you found that it was helpful, you can like the video. Uh, subscribing to the channel is a great way to support what I'm doing so that I can produce more content for you guys on a regular basis. We are starting to open up classes on Udemy. Uh, I do hope, I, not at the time of this video, but I do hope soon I will have a limiting reactant balancing equation and molar mass course for those of you that are in general chemistry. We also have organic chemistry courses there that can support the channel. And other than that, thank you very much. And if you comment, I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for learning with us, guys. I'll see you for the next video.